Victory is our first question. Good evening. My name is Victory Gu. I'm a Walmart organizing leader for Take Action Minnesota. On September 26th, we launched a Renew Minnesota campaign at Arlington High School with over 800 people in attendance. I'm excited about this Renew Minnesota vision and meaning behind it. To me, this vision is about equity, equity that we all seek no matter which racial, social, and economic background we come from. It's also about knowing that I have a say in who our next governor will be. It's all, it's all about making sure we have a governor who share our vision and will implement this vision through his or her term in office. Now, everyone here who shares this vision wants to know, since the launch on September 26th, what have you done to enact the vision, and how have you incorporated this vision into your campaign? Well, first of all, let me tell you that I enjoyed myself at uh, Arlington that day. But I have to tell you that I think I've lived your vision my entire uh, political career at the Capitol. Uh, my door has been open to uh, everyone, whether it's uh, people uh, that came to me over the Green Act, whether it was the United Food and Commercial Workers Union that came to me about uh, conditions in the, uh, in the uh, slaughterhouses and packing houses that they work in, uh, whether it's uh, uh, minimum wage workers, uh, uh, and I'll tell them restaurant that uh, unite here who came to me. Uh, whether it's uh, the black community coming to me to uh, reintroduce uh, folks that have been in jail and in prison, uh, find some place to help them both with housing and economic uh, justice as far as a job once they get out. So I, I've lived, I think, your vision uh, in my 23 years at the Capitol. I have had an open door policy that uh, I feel has let the most common, ordinary person in this state, no matter what their color, creed, religion, whatever, come into my office. My door has been open to everybody, always and all the time. And that's the way I have lived my political life, and that's the way I've lived my uh, personal life, and that's the way I would govern as the governor of the state of Minnesota. Um, that's we appreciate very much the, that you've been responsive in so many ways to various people who have come through the press. Can you talk a little bit about how you'd be proactive in, in not just responding to people who come to you, but sort of laying out the vision for the people of Minnesota and rejecting the ideology that we've been hearing for so long? Well, you know, I, I, I've said from the beginning of this campaign about the way that I've raised and believing that uh, we have to uh, provide a good education for people, particularly our new immigrants, that uh, because that's what my parents were given as first generation Americans, as new immigrants, a good education that enabled them to go on and get a decent uh, living. And uh, you know, I've worked hard to make sure that uh, the communities of color have gotten a good uh, entry into higher education as an example with the uh, Power of You, where I expanded that in my committee, where uh, when the Latino community came to my office, uh, I included the DREAM Act in my higher education omnibus bill. Uh, where, as I said before, where the uh, United Food Commercial Workers Union came to me when nobody else would take care of their and carry their bill, uh, where uh, there, a lot of their members, uh, particularly minority members, were being treated like dirt, really, and I understand that because I come from a we were treated like dirt a couple generations ago, and I'm the one that has included all of their legislation in my own So now for our second question, Marlene. Hi, Victory. Um, so my name is Marlene Lieber, and I'm a Take Action Leader from Edina. And I'm a proud supporter of the Renew Minnesota campaign. And I know that we're going to need a seated, progressive governor to help us accomplish our goals. I also know this person will need to raise taxes in a fair manner. And we've seen how damaging that no new taxes has been to Minnesota and to the people of Minnesota. So with that in mind, I ask you, if you are elected governor, will you raise taxes? And specifically, will, how will you use your campaign to build the political support that you need to um, raise revenues during their campaign, or administration. Okay, that's a difference. Yeah. 
I'm trying to raise revenues from people like you that's not working for my campaign. So, you know, I'm not the big money person in this campaign at all, but I'm pretty proud of what I've raised. That's a whole different question. Uh, does anybody in this room think I've been shy over the last 23 years about uh, raising revenue and how to raise it fairly? Uh, you know, uh, this year I had to pass the tax bill. Not only out of tax committee, but on the House floor as the vote was tied 68-68. Now there were things in the tax bill that I liked and things I didn't like. But I understand that, you know, the things I didn't like that we had to uh, have uh, $2 billion approximately, approximately in revenue. I introduced the bill that would have put a surtax on income tax obligations. So people in this room that might uh, not have, uh, you know, a big of an income that paid $500 to the state would have paid another $50. Uh, I also have a bill uh, to uh, increase the upper brackets again. So to me, and I don't have my little farmer labor packet in my pocket like I always carry, Gene, you know that I've showed it to you, and others in this room, uh, the only fair tax is an income tax. And I think whether you're a multimillionaire or a uh, very poor income worker or anywhere in between, people can understand in a time of crisis that we need revenue and the fairest way to do it would have been a surcharge on everyone's income tax obligation. It had been done in the 1950s to raise revenue for our veterans that were having some problems coming back from World War II. It was done in 1982 uh, when we had a similar crisis economically to what we have now. I think the DFL House and Senate uh, this year should have done what the DFL House and Senate did in 1982 and I said that. I said that all along. People that were in my higher education committee in this room know. So Lisinski knows. He heard me say it. That if we're not here at Christmas time, we will not have done our job, and the people that have put us in office and put us in power will be extremely disappointed with us. And we did stay there till Christmas, but I'm not in leadership, so I couldn't force them to. But that's what I would have done to compromise with a crybaby governor who thinks that he's always got to get his own way. Do I have a time? Yes, you have 10 seconds. Ditto.